Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the first match of the night here. We do have the Singapore... What is this thing called, actually? What is the official name of this? But we have the <laughs> Garena Carnival. Carnival Tournament. Yeah. Okay. There, Mishka, there you go. And there, there, there's the brackets, guys. We're going to get right into it, though. The picking phase well underway. We're starting off with Team East versus Team New Era. I'm Zayori. Joining me is Mishka and Min. I'm so excited that Club Zayori is back in swing here, guys. Club Zayori. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Min, how are you feeling today, sir? Yeah, feeling fresh and great. Looking forward to this tournament, and yeah, so here we have it. Yes, indeed we do. Mishka, how are you feeling this fine morning? Um, I'm okay. Okay, well Still I'm... Still pretty peeved <sighs> for some reason, but I'm okay. <laughs> it's so bright and early there. I know, I'm, I'm, I'm on the complete opposite. You, you made a joke earlier about gamers not getting up early, and I, I can contest to that. I'm going to stay up late and not get up early whatsoever okay so we are actually starting in round two tonight uh ladies and gentlemen we skipped round one so this is truly the round of 16 and mishka no confusion are we going straight through to the finals tonight no it's gonna be till the finals will be played at the uh garina carnival which is on the same day as the same period as um the finals for the dreamhack um dreamhack finals as well Okay, and and so tonight we're just going to be playing up until the last two teams. Mm -hmm. Okay, beautiful. Last week there was a little bit of confusion on that front. So man, let's go ahead and get right into this game here on our Legion team. New Era, we do have Flint, Beastwood, Torture, Armadon, Nymphora, and Aluna. Over here on our Hellborn side, Team East in the brackets. Here they are, Team R Men, and I'm actually blanking on what that stands for exactly. If you pull up the stats, Team Running, Running Men. Running Men, there you go. Uh, but nonetheless, they do have Flux, Defiler, uh, Forsaken Archer, Magmus, and Hammerstorm. Min, any thoughts about these lineups here? Oh yeah, uh, based on my own opinion, right, I find that for the Hellborn team, they got pretty fierce lineup over here. So yeah, it's pretty much more offensive type. And yeah, for the Legion team, they have more a kind of turtle style and get Flynn, Bisto fat to carry the team that kind of yeah stuff play with yep absolutely and we saw armadon a little bit in uh, some of the mid wars we were casting before and he's sort of a double-edged sword a little bit if he falls off he really becomes pretty useless but if he gets tanking gets a couple kills early on man can he get out of control especially with all this great support torture and Amphora and aluna i think armadon's gonna have a fine time and like you said flint beastwood one of the ultimate carries here and i actually didn't even We'll look at the blind bands because we went through it so fast. Pharaoh, Thunderbringer, Devourer, Behemoth, and Pebbles uh, were our blind bands here. So, uh, obviously, Flint Beastwood making the cut. Gonna make it through here. Talk to me about Defiler a little bit, though. That is not one that we see too often in Midwars, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, yeah, we don't often see Defiler in Midwars too often. Yeah, that's true. So, what do you think? I mean, is she good? Does she fit in here? Or is she gonna be uh, kind of useless in this lineup? Uh, well, she is not totally useless because, um, I, I mean, she has a very powerful ultimate, that's number one, mm -hmm. and two, it's very ma uh, magic efficient in mid war, so she has the silent ability, so yeah, which is quite uh, huge in mid wars when you actually get silent and your, the, your team can't do anything, so it's very, very huge, so yeah. yeah. And that's that's absolutely true, especially with that silence as you level it up, it goes up to a 350 radius. And then they actually nerfed that not that long ago, so not quite as powerful as it used to be, but still, uh, you're exactly right. Especially in mid wars where everyone's kind of clumped up, that silence is particularly powerful. The ultimate great for pushing, as well. One of the things about the ultimate that I always sort of scratch my head at is it does actually physical damage, if I'm not totally mistaken. So um, it, it goes through shrunken head and all sorts of other stuff. So it can be a pretty powerful tool. Uh, and kind of a nice a nice counter to, uh, well, heroes that like to get rush and early shrunken head. You guys really turning out these skins, though. This Hammerstorm skin, man, give me some inside Michigan. Maybe you can shed some more insight. What Hammerstorm skin is this? He looks a little, a little ridiculous. This is the Wrath Hammerstorm skin. Wow. One of the seven deadly skins, oh. um, collector's edition. Okay. It does it's look very deadly. Uh, <laughs> it's well, I'm supposed to be angry, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's the thing that's on his shoulders? I don't. What is? That's a chipro. Oh yeah, okay. I see a chipro with a little mohawk. Yeah. Oh, that's adorable. That's really cute. 
And of course, uh, we got the Mag Moose here. A lot of skins in this game. This is this is good stuff. I really like it. Poor Luna, though, man. She's still skinless. So sad. Mm -hmm. So sad indeed. So, um, looking at item choices, really nothing standing out of me. We see Forsaken Archer already picking up magic armor. Really not uh, a big surprise there. Torturer's got Ring of the Teacher. Still no Ring of the Teacher over on the Hellborn side. Hopefully they pick one up before too long, but... All in all, man, we have got a defensive game on our hands to start it off looking at the farm, Forsaken Archer leading the way, but really uh, not much to speak of. It's all about the kills and mid-wars coming up for that fourth minute. All tied up 0-0. Zero, zero. We'll see if something maybe happens at this rune spawn here. Flux is headed up. Better be careful, Mr. Flux. You're walking into the danger zone, buddy. Rune's going to pop up here in about a second. And what is it? I kind of I, I don't know what the rune is. I missed it. Where, oh, it is. Okay, there it is, yeah. Invis on Flux, though. He's going to be able to survive. A little bit of a close call, but... So unlike prize or price, there are no incentives here to do uh, weird things uh, as far as no runes or fast wins or anything like that, Mishka? No, this is just the normal competition for me. Normal mid-wars, okay. Good yeah. Enough. Flux, though, he's going to get caught forward. That Word of Revelation going to cost him his life. It's going to be a one-for-one one. Armadon uh, in exchange for who was that that fell there? It looks like uh, oh yeah, Flux of course. So not a bad exchange. Of course Bloodlust going in favor of the Legion side and it's going to put them slightly ahead here. Finally a little bit of action, Min. Yeah, finally just a bit of action when uh, Flux was so confident walking up with the Invis and he got caught. Yep. Absolutely walking just a pinch too close to that ward of rev, and it actually despawned shortly after, so they were kind of making the best of that ward. Of course, both teams here with kind of appropriate warding on the same side of the river. That seems to be kind of a, a popular location. Another ward of rev actually going down now for the Hellborn team. Um, I guess kind of just in case, looking for other wards potentially. I think they're just out of range, yep, so that's kind of unfortunate. Defiler, we're going to throw out some harass. I don't know, man. I feel like if I try to do play-by-play -play on all this Midwars action, I'm going to get burned out before the night is done. Midwars play-by-play is just too intense to keep up with. Yeah, it's, yeah I have to agree with that because... Um, <laughs> but if they keep clashing and keep making things happening, it will be really, really tired for you as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oh man, I'm I'm begging for a little bit of action here, and honestly, my my mid wars analysis uh, isn't my strongest my strongest point as a, a Han caster. So hopefully you can fill us in here, man. I mean, is there anything thought provoking or, or about item choices in this game in particular, or anything standing out at you so far? Um, okay, for the item choice, okay, there's an uh, engage going on, but uh, nothing much. Okay, so for the item, it's pretty much standard. You can see everyone had a battery and power supply so it's really kind of standard and with the mystic vestments and boots as well so nothing much to say at this point as well except for the warding i think <laughs> mm -hmm. yep. yeah so mm -hmm. yep <laughs> I, I was gonna sort of i just kind of agree with you that that so far not much is jumping out at me it seems to be a pretty standard mid wars of course i guess one thing that we should mention this is all best of one no best of threes today at all, so that sort of explains maybe a little bit of the passive play when it's best of one, it's all on the line, um, you know, every single game. So I can see why neither side is, is really taking any risk, but as far as a long turtle game like this, do you think it benefits one team more so than the other? Um, well, for me, I don't think turtling is really good in mid war. Sometimes, if your lineup is really aggressive, you should really go aggressive instead of just turtling. Whereas, because for right now, um, each team has one kill at least, so it's fine. Mm -hmm. Because mid war, the first few kills is very important as it, is. it consumes a lot of gold with just one kill, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, since your lineup is aggressive, why not go for it? Just just go for a kill and just attempt for it. I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it definitely is a little out of character seeing teams here with full mana just kind of hanging back. I mean, look at this Hellborn team. They have so much chain stun between Hammerstorm, Magmus, and that uh, crippling volley on Forsaken Archer. You top that with a wave of death from Defiler, the silence, and Flex goes in there and drops his release all over everybody. I mean, that's a... A nice chain that they can set up fairly easily here, and they're just kind of not doing it. Well, it looks like they may try and do it here. Going to catch Torture, but uh, Magma's going to come in a little late, and actually not going to catch. Magma's now going to get turned around on. 
and uh, just kind of some back and forth exchanging. I don't know if any kills going to result out of this. Neither side really uh, staggering their stuns so well. I think they both could have secured some kills if they just used those abilities in tandem a little bit better. But uh, nice to at least see them finally using some mana. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> and instead, right now, the Legion team is doing the engage instead of the Hellborn team. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I mean, especially with that Hammerstorm stun, I mean, Magmus needed to be in a better position there, and that, that should have been a pretty easy kill on the Nymphora. So uh, may maybe things will change once we hit level 6. I mean, pretty much everyone in the game is sitting level 5 at the moment. So, uh, well, less that of uh, Hammerstorm over here. But maybe once those level 6s come out, we'll see a little more aggression. Although I can't imagine that'll make this Legion side that much more aggressive. Flint Beast with ulti will start to come out. With Nymphora, that'll be a little bit obnoxious. I'm sure they'll pick up a mana ring before too long. But on the Hellborn side, they've got some powerful ults. Piercing arrows, uh, Discharge here, as well as the Defiler ult, Magmus. Eh, we'll see. Hopefully... They step up the aggression. I think it's hurting them at this point more so than anything else. Mm -hmm. Good, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. If um, the Hellborn team reached level 6, they had more um, opportunities to set things up right with Flux Alti at the very least. Yeah. So. Wow, look how polite these guys are. Are the spectators ready? I don't think a team has ever asked me that before unpausing before, I'll be perfectly honest with you. <laughs> Only on the Garena okay. client. I mean, it's just ridiculous how nice everyone is over here. <laughs> oh. That's, that's really rare for someone to say that. <laughs> you actually have good community. Yeah. I, I have to admit, that's that's probably a rarity. I mean, that that's pretty uh, over the top. But I, I appreciate the notion nonetheless. I, I uh, would much prefer over-the-top niceness than with the over-the-top meanness that is often associated with uh, some members of the Heroes of New Earth community. But anyhow, those level 6s finally starting to come out. We see Flint Beastwood, well, doing what Flint Beastwood does best in mid-wars and abusing that ultimate. Poor Flux, man. Ooh, there's the red power throw. Flux, need to be a little careful. He runs himself a potion, probably going to have to run himself another after taking uh, the red power through to the face. The fire are going to get caught. There's that stun stagger I was talking about. Easy kill going to come out for this Legion side. Things are going to continue. Luna going to get pulled in though. And actually the Hellborn side going to benefit a bit more. Armadon going to fall as well. Are they going to continue this engage? Uh, Flint Beast going to pick up yet another kill. Well, he's going to be able to finish off Flux. That's going to tie it up 3-3. Three to three. So very even exchange. Legion side just about as ahead as they were before the engage commenced. Wow. Mm -hmm. So I guess we're kind of right about this level 6 mark, Min. It was like almost the <laughs> drop of a hat. Everyone hits six, and we see way more aggression. Mhm. Mm yeah. So for the Legion team as well, uh, when Flame Beast will hit six, he's more easily to get kills from the from the Hellborn team. I mean, yeah, at least he will be able to snipe down those low HP guys that uh, the rest of his team is unable to bring bring the person down. So yeah, from there he will slowly build out his item bit by bit, and yeah, there. I mean, look at that Aluna, Aluna harass right there. Flint Beastwood just going to continue to use the ulti. Flux, for some reason, is the target of choice. I guess they just want to grief him. There's the red power throw again. And it just <laughs> destroying Flux. Absolutely nothing he can do about it. Um, I have to admit, though, this Aluna, man, she has been, or he, she. I, I always hate that. You know, if the character is a she and you know it's a he playing it, how should you refer to that <laughs> character in game? I kind of just flip flop back and forth. But. Um, Doing a great job with the power throws, nonetheless. The green and the red power throws alike. You know, he's been, been nailing them pretty well. Flux is going to go in, though. There's the ulti. Magma's going to follow up this time. And there's that stung stagger from the Hellborn side. The eruption for Magma's going to come out. It's going to be a clean sweep. If Beastwood falls here, down he goes. Unfortunately, they do lose two in the mix, but still beautifully executed. That's what that Hellborn team is all about. I don't know why they waited so long to release the Kraken, so to speak. But now that the Kraken is out, they're going to pull ahead now with a nice gold lead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really nice um, follow up after Magmus has, uh, I mean the Flux has used his ultimate. So this is what we are waiting for. I mean, this is their potential. I hope they realize it by now and not to just uh, slack around and give Legion team the opportunity to bring, I mean, bring the game up. So yeah, they should really use what they have. Yeah, absolutely. That red power throw almost nailing Flux in the face while he had the potion on. That would have been a sure kill right there. 
very, very close indeed. So, um, wow. This Legion team showing us that they're made of something scary as well. Now that some kills have come onto the board, we're finally seeing some interesting items. Flint Beastwood picking up the level 2 shield breaker. Is that a level 3 shield breaker now? Oh no, that's the overlay from the top. It's a level 1 shield breaker, pardon me. <laughs> um, but nonetheless, shield breaker at this point is a little bit scary. Armadon picking up his Helm of the Black Legion as well. Going Helm before Boots, not surprised to see that whatsoever. Really not too many big items on the Hellborn side though. That Ring of Sorcery has come out. And, um, well, that's just going to make their harassment that much easier. It looks like they're just going to wait for cooldown rotation though. Flux ulti coming up very shortly. The Filer's ult as well. Piercing arrows is already up. So they're going to make this happen soon. Magma's the only one without an ulti here, but they're all sitting at full mana. I think it's in their interest just to use that mana and abuse this very passive play seems to be uh, working against them a little bit. Their poke just doesn't compare with Aluna and Flint Beastwood. Absolutely insane. Another power throw just nailing Archer in the face. Not only is it keeping them very defensive in the lane and allowing this Armandon and Flint to farm, but a lot of money's being burned on potions for this Hellborn side. They're not denying into uh, Zorgoth or Transmutenstein down here. They've been running potions, so that is eventually going to add up. You see Archer using one right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I don't know the reason why are they playing so passively because uh, they had a lot of stuns at Immobilizer, they had a silence and they can do things easily, pretty easily, I guess. So they are really playing really <laughs> defensively and really turtling all the way. They are not even attempting to deny the creeps. I don't know what's the reason. I, I think they don't want to make any mistake and they want to catch the opponent's uh, weak point and wait for them to make the mistakes instead, and they counter it. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. yeah. Well, that, that's definitely true, and honestly, I think it's really just that harass that Aluna and Flinkin put out is just getting the best of them. You know, they're sort of like, wow, they're doing a lot of damage, we can't go in, and it's that kind of just uh, hyper-aggressive mentality that's keeping them back, but they've had enough, they're going to go in. Not going to be the best engage, though. Flux going to way over commit. He's going to drop his ulti, drop the release, but he's going to get taken out. The first to fall in the fight. The rest of the Hellborn team forced to head for the hills. They might get cleaned up a little bit. Power throw going to connect with the Filer. There's the ulti from Flint on the Magmus as well. Not going to be enough for a kill. Hammerstorm going to get caught by Torture. He's going to fall. Forsaken Archer trying to do what he can, but not going to be able to do anything too useful at this point. Flux going to try to make something happen on the Flint. The volley going to connect with Armadon. Not enough follow-up, though, to secure a kill. Legion side going to come out ahead, and they're going to tie it up once again. Poor engage from Flux, man. He just went balls to the wall straight into the tower. Unfortunately, his team kind of left him high and dry uh, after he overcommitted. And um, a good thought, but unfortunately, just not a crisp execution. No ult used by the Filer either. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty very a uh, bad engage down there just now. And... Yeah, uh, Flux did the initiation and there's no follow-up, I mean instant follow-up from any of the team, so uh, they aren't able to yeah. do the thing well and yeah, everything seems to be bad just now and Flux got caught out of position. In yeah, well, yeah, I mean it wasn't really, I mean Flux dropped the ult and then there was no follow-up, so as the team kept running, he just kept on chasing them. If he had dropped his ult and the rest of his team was ready to follow up, then they probably could have made it happen with Flux being up as far as he did. But since they didn't follow him, he kind of just ran in by himself. So it wasn't really a bad ultimate. I, I guess you could probably say his team might have been back a little too far. But um, I, I can certainly understand why Defiler didn't pop the ultimate. I mean, he wasn't really in a position to do much damage with it. They still need to make this happen, though. I mean, if they're waiting for an ulti cooldown rotation... Uh, piercing arrows coming up in 10 seconds. They're going to want to make it happen again pretty soon here. Defiler finally going to start using that death wave. I mean, he has been sitting at full mana for the majority of this game, and I, for the life of me, I can't figure out why Defiler has such a great harass with that wave of death. I mean, even if he popped the ultimate and pressure this tower a little bit, I mean, the, the Legion side is not going to want to fight into that Defiler ultimate if they can avoid it. So you can really use that to be aggressive uh, and pressure that tower really kind of as much as you want, I suppose. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, uh, because I, yeah, really, I seriously don't know why this Magmus is like, if you realize he's standing way behind, mm -hmm. <laughs> and if he's positioning this way, uh, he won't be able to follow up anything. He should yeah. stand uh, further in front, and if he had the chance, just initiate in. Yep. 
Well, yeah, part of his after problem all, here yeah. is he's sitting without boots. He went Mystic Vestments before boots, and I, I, you know, I, I like the effort to get Mystic Vestments, but in this game, I mean, he's not going up against that much magic damage. You've got an Armadon and a Flint Beastwood. I mean, they're going to be a big portion of your damage dealers. I mean, Aluna's leading the charts by far, but that's just because of the power, uh, power throw harass. I don't know if that warrants going for a Mystic Vestments before boots on a Magmus. I mean, you need to have that speed to be able to get into these fights, and we've seen him miss a really a number of lava surges here just because he hasn't been able to get into the fight fast enough. So Forsaken Archer gonna finishing up the Whispering Helm though. It's gonna be another big item coming out in the field. Flint Beastwood here sitting on a level two shield breaker gonna have enough for that level three here in just a couple seconds. Other than that, still not too much on the field. Really a pretty passive game here. We got about 15 kills in 18 minutes. That is not a hell of a lot for mid wars. Stun gonna come out onto Armadon. There's the pull, release gonna follow up. Volley, Lava Surge. Channeling these stuns pretty well. Flux gonna blow the ulti. Armadon looking like he's gonna be able to survive. First kill actually gonna come out for the Legion. And wow, they're gonna get cleaned up. This Hellborn team not executing well at all. Forsaken Archer, the lone survivor. They wanna dive the tower on her, but they're not gonna make it happen. Volley gonna connect, but it's gonna hit Armadon's back. The level four Armadillo, man. He had his back turned for most of that fight, and wow, did it work against the Hellborn side. So much of their damage was mitigated. Of all the targets, Armadon's back is the absolute worst choice. We see Flux here trying to get in front of him. Magmus going to come in. That Lava Surge going to be enough for the kill. That barely levels it out, though. Legion side pulling ahead now. 3k gold. Just about 3k experience as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, death. <laughs> that engage was, I don't know, because uh, Flux used his ulti after everything was used. <laughs> yeah, and they made, I mean, he made the thing worse. So it's a bad engage down there. And for what I think, if they are very hesi they are hesitating to burst down Armadon as in they don't want to focus on him. So that's not really one thing they want to uh, yeah. I mean they need to take note of. If you want to get Armadon, burst him down immediately. If not, don't even touch him. Yeah. That's one. Yeah, exactly. So. And, and you, you have to make sure you're doing that damage from the front. Doing it from the back, and hell, even doing it to the side really isn't going to cut it. Uh, I mean, him and Torture now, they have Shaman headdresses completed. You want to avoid them as targets. There's a lot of magic damage coming out from this Hellborn team. Forsaken Archer's right click auto attack is really not too, it's not too bad, but it's also not too strong. They need to rely on a lot of magic damage to burst these targets down. You got to pick on these squishies, and that's part of the great thing about this Legion roster. Is look at how they're positioned. They're going to send this Armadon way out in front. The rest of their team is going to sit in the back. The supports are going to play very defensively and not go in until the Hellborn overcommits. Aluna going to continue poking with those red power throws. Flint with the ultimate. I mean, Flint's doing a hell of a lot of damage here. Let's see where he is on the damage charts. He's, he's on par for the course. 12% is uh, really not too bad. It's fourth in the game. And uh, he really doesn't have to take too much risk. I mean, he's sitting on red boots. And what is his score? 5, 1, and 6. That ultimate just working wonders for him. Very nicely mm -hmm. executed by the Legion team. Looks like they're going to go in here. Magma's going to get taught. The tower actually going to fall. This is a great time to go in. Armadon spamming those spines. He's in the front lines. Let's see if they can pick up a few more kills here. Red power throw going to finish off Forsaken Archer. Going to see another kill come out as well onto Hammerstorm. Oh, pardon, it's not Hammerstorm. Who is that? Uh, Defiler. Hammerstorm still alive, but he very well may fall. The stun from Aluna, the Flint Beast with ulti. Then there it is, the power throw going to finish him off. Magma's going to come in now, Forsaken Archer and Defiler. They might be able to make something happen. Might be able to clean up a few kills, but at this point, the damage has been done. They're trailing by a pretty significant margin. They've lost that Tier 1 tower. Just a matter of time till this Tier 2 starts taking pressure. Flint Beastwood almost able to finish off Mr. Flux there, but unfortunately, just not enough damage. Wow, 16 to 10. Very eruptive game all of a sudden. Now we see Team New Era looking like they may be able to clinch a victory here in the round of 16. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, they are already in good position to actually make the engage. They have such a tanky Amazon and uh, I have to agree that Aluna is really doing a very good job in this game. He, he keeps uh, power throw non-stop and her make it, uh, I mean, keep harassing so that Amazon and Flynn will be able to pick up those low HP heroes, so it's really good play, yeah. Absolutely. And yeah, look at Armadon, he's here over here, over commit a bit, and here comes his teammate, uh, chain reaction cast by, yeah, and a red stun cast by Luna, and you see, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> if you want to get Armadon, just bring him down, if not, <laughs> don't even want aim him. 
Yeah, I, at this uh, point, focusing this Armadon is just a lost cause. Point in case right there, especially now that Tablet of Command has come out for Aluna, uh, keeping him safe to sound. Also, this Armadon has been doing a great job positioning himself, so a lot of that damage is coming from the back. That's been sort of the secret to his success so far in this game, and uh, kind of point in case right there. Aluna going to be in a little trouble. She's going to be able to make it away. Armadon may have overcommitted this time, though. Aluna actually going to come back in. Armadon, man, he ain't afraid of no ghosts, but the eruption going to be enough to finish him off. and be enough to get torture here as well. If it's not, the Lava Surge that's coming up in about three seconds should be. There's the pull from Flux, and down goes Torturer. So our Legion side does get cleaned up. Now 20 to 14, they're still leading by a nice 10k gold and experience. I think they are in damn good shape, my friend, and they certainly shouldn't be worried at all. Flint has now picked up his Blessed Orb, and uh, I'm sure we'll see him move into that Geometer's Bane before too long here. A fantastic choice for Mr. Flint Beastwood. This is when Flint really starts to get scary. scary. Level 14, he's got level 4 of all of his abilities. He's got that long range, that right-click auto attack, DPS looking pretty scary. Starting to attack fast, I don't know, man. Hollow Point Shells gets pretty ridiculous once he starts attacking, or stacking that attack speed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Flint Beastwood. Why, why Flint Beastwood is so popular and good in mid was because one, his ultimate can pick off his hero easily. So, and two, he has a very long range. And in mid wars, you have to aim the one in front. You can't possibly go all the way to the back and kill the hero from the back. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so that's why he is so efficient in mid wars. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, he's a bit scary right now with his, his a bit of gear up with the Ultima up and Shieldbreaker 3. So, mm -hmm. uh, Hellbun's got to be a bit careful right here mm -hmm. when they are doing the engage. Absolutely. Armadon's now picked up his barrier idol, so they can be able to push this pretty easily. And uh, look how fast this tower's falling. If anything, our Legion side showing us that they're going to be able to clinch this game from pushing, if not through kills here. There's going to be some engagement, though. Defiler actually going to pop. The ulti Legion team doesn't seem to be too scared. A lot of damage exchanging coming out. Who's going to be the first to pick up the kill? It's going to be the Legion side. Armadon getting dangerously low, but he's going to be able to turn around and go back into Defiler. Going to fall to the Flint Beastwood ultimate. And Four are going to throw a stun onto Magmus here as he's running to the side. The damage continues for the Legion team. Aluna finishes off the tower. The shrine exposed. Now Flint going to fall to a beautiful power throw snipe. And it's looking like Team New Era may be able to clench this. Team East on their last leg, so to speak. They may have a team fight left in them, but... I think it's just a matter of time at this point, Min. 13k gold, or 14k gold, really, 12k experience. Whoa. Mm hmm Yeah. <laughs> 13k, so... Well, I had to... I, I know what is the reason behind this. Uh, Hellborn team, they rely, they rely on their ultimate too much in this game. And not going for the initiation i mean they had really powerful initiation power right there and they are not using it to their fullest potential so mm -hmm. now uh, armadon is a bit tanky and they can't do it already because uh, armadon is always at the front line and it, he's really a uh, irritating hero <laughs> if he's he's tanky enough to tank your whole team yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Magmus gonna go in with a nice ulti though. They're gonna be able to pick up a couple of kills. Hat trick coming out for Magmus actually. As uh, Torturer Flint Beast would end him for a fall. So that's the power of a Magmus with a portal key. Wow, wasn't really expecting that. Maybe a little bit of arrogance from our Legion side. I don't know that it's gonna be enough to quite bring this Hellborn team back yet, but it actually does level out that experience gap quite a bit and helps close that gold gap a little bit. Another one of those, and I think they'll be, well, maybe coming back into this game. You have to remember two towers have gone down and they have very little pushing power. Impressive nonetheless, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I did not really expect that as well, but it was a really nice eruption coming out from Magmus to be able to take down three heroes. Yeah, well played there by Magmus. Kind of caught me off guard a little bit. I glanced at the other monitor for a second and was like, whoa, look at you, Mr. <laughs> Magnus. I'm going to see more engagement here. Our Hellborn side getting much more aggressive now that their shrine's been exposed. Armadon going to use that barrier idol. It's going to absorb a good bit of damage here. As I mentioned before, Defiler ulti does do physical, so the barrier idol not going to help him in that department. But still going to be very useful. It doesn't seem to matter though. The Hellborn side kind of getting cleaned up here. A lot of very low heroes. 
uh, Forsaken Archer. Actually going to be able to make it back to the well in the double digits with hit points there, sitting around 75. And as they're headed back to the well, their shrine going to start taking damage from creeps, if not the heroes as well. And actually, the Legion team going to back up here. I guess they figure they're not going to have the deeps to take down the shrine, so they might as well just save it, regroup, use that new little bit of gold that they've found, and uh, come back. Of course, the shrine as well as the world tree do regenerate at a very, very quick, uh, quick rate compared to the normal game. So you really have to kind of finish it off in one full push. See, so the shrine's already back mm -hmm. up to full health. So not surprised to see mm -hmm. him back up there. Yep, yeah, that's right. I mean, they got some kills, like you say, then they, why don't we just back off and gear up better, I mean, with better items and do a second push to make sure that we can instantly drop down the shine right. instead of taking charges and feeding kills to the Hellborn team. Yeah, exactly right. And that's just kind of one of the things about mid wars that it's actually kind of good i mean if the shrine didn't regenerate it would be a little bit too easy for a team that's ahead to just keep chipping away at it so it does add a nice element that even though you know even though the hellborn team is up against a wall right now you know if they had you know back to back genocides they could potentially come back in this game not saying that that's going to be the case but it's uh, just an element of mid wars that does make it well, just a little bit more interesting. Flint and Peacewood actually didn't go for that Geometer's Bane. Looks like he headed straight for uh, a Shrunken Head here, which is not a bad choice, but just a little bit interesting. I thought with that uh, Blessed Orb first, he was for sure going to be picking up the Geometers and then move into a Shrunken Head, but just uh, opting for the additional stats, it would seem. Max the Malphi on Mr. Armadon here as well. And, of course, uh, there's an Astrolabe on Nymphora. She's had for quite some while, but still an important item to note. Portal Key on Hammerstorm as well. Seems like a little bit of an interesting choice to me. A Portal Key on Flux as well as a, a, a Thunderclaw on uh, Forsaken Archer. Not quite yet that Charged Hammer, but uh, it is a Thunderclaw. We see the Legion team just waiting. Armadon out in front. They're trying to bait the Engage. It seems that the Team East has gotten a little bit wise to the antics. They're not going to drop everything on Armadon, waiting for the support to come up and show their faces. The Barrier Idol going to be used. It's actually not going to be on for too much longer. Barrier Idol's off. This is what they've been waiting for. The Flux ult is going to come in. Hammerstorm's still going to be a little late, but there's Magnus with a big eruption. That's going to pick up two kills. Let's see what else they can do. Luna's on the run. She's going to get pulled back. They might be able to finish her off. Oh my god, she's going to get away with about 50 health, but the rest of the team gets cleaned up. Armadon going to fall. He picks up two kills with the Quill Spam. Forsaken Archer dangerously low. Aluna, the lone survivor for this Legion side. Min, is this Hellborn team going to be able to do it? The experience gap is non-existent. 8.5k gold. I'm... Wow, I'm turning different colors right now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they do still have a very strong ultimate and uh, Legion team needs to take on this. So they had to end this real fast and not allowing them to recharge their ultimates because of this. I mean, yeah, they are, they are all hitting 16 almost and their cooldowns are quite fast. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So maybe they can take Trum Transmutant Sign and Zolgar uh, for Flynn and yeah, they just go for it. So look at this, so this is not something you see too frequently. It's actually really rare in a mid-wars to see Transmutant Stein and Zorgaf get killed. Not only because, well I guess it's rare to be this late and have one team that has a tower here to make it a little bit more safe, but usually it's just a bit too risky. And uh, the Token of Sight gonna come out, and what's, what's the other thing here? We see it so infrequently, Token of Power. Which Maybe consists of exactly all runes. What they do? Oh wow! Yeah, it gives you all runes: illusion, invisibility, regen, and haste. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, that answers that question. I actually did not know that. I have to admit, I, I did not know what they dropped. I knew it wasn't a regular token, but. It's not sure what it mm -hmm. is, and it is all the runes. That is incredible. We'll see if they make the best of it, though. The double damage actually almost off, and uh, we'll see what they're going to do. Is Flint just going to go straight for the shrine? And it seems like he is. They're going to go in, though. There's the Flux ulti. Where's the follow-up? Flux looks like he might get bursted down here. Magma's going to come in. We see a couple of shrunken heads used, and uh, we'll see what happens. Not looking so good for this Hellborn side. They're starting to get cleaned up. It seems Flint beast with that double damage. Is going to be enough. Yeah, it's going to be a clean sweep. It's a clean sweep, pardon me. Very nicely done by Team New Era. GG Well Played's coming out. Actually, preemptive GG Well Played's from Team Era. They will be able to do it nonetheless. So they can just finish off that shrine. There it is, man. An intense game, mm -hmm. though. I thought the Hellborn team may have had a chance. At the very least, they gave us one hell of a show for the round of 16. For that, yeah. I thank them. <laughs> yeah, at least um, they put up some good tries down there and. 
it is not totally i mean yeah i mean it's a bit too late they should <laughs> they had the initiation power they should use it at the start of the game and they could have have more advantage <laughs> throughout absolutely right my friend so guys that does wrap it up for game number one of the night of course that is the round of 16 and uh, we have plenty more mid wars action coming your way so sit tight another game going to be coming up shortly <laughs>